And hello again, my little mathematicians. Let's go ahead and get you started on C48, where we are reviewing subtracting mixed numbers. When we are subtracting, the first thing you wanna do is get a common denominator. So what can two and four both become? Look at the bigger number of four. Can two become four? Why, yes it can. So there's my common denominator. Now what did you multiply the four by to become four? One. So one times one is one. Two times what is four? Two. So one times two is two. I was able to do that because two fourths is equivalent to one half. If you were to reduce it, you'd get the same number. The reason that works is because we multiplied essentially by one. Any number over itself is one, and any number times one is its same number. Um, it didn't lose its sense of self. We just renamed it. Okay, so two-fourths is a rename of one-half. I did that so that now they have a common denominator, and I can move on to subtracting. So you take the numerators one minus two, but uh-oh, you can't take away two from one. So I instead need to borrow from the whole number of eight. If I borrow one, now that becomes a seven, and I'm gonna add one as a fraction. When you decide what fraction to do, it's any number over itself that's one, and I'm gonna pick whatever this denominator is of four. Because when you go to combine one with the one force, if they already have the same denominator, that's less work. So that stays the same, and then one plus four is five. Now you have a big enough numerator, five, to take away two from. Five minus two is three. Keep the denominator the same, and seven minus five is two. It can't reduce, and it's not improper, so you're done. So you're gonna find two and three-fourths along the bottom and cross it off. Notice how I didn't write it yet because you're only gonna write whatever's left after you're done with all the problems. Let's look ahead and try to figure out number 10. Okay, for number 10, I wanna figure out what's my common denominator of three and eight? Well, can three become eight? No. Eight times two is 16, can three become 16? No. Eight times three is 24. Can three become 24? Yes, it can. So three times what was 24? Eight. So two times eight is 16. Eight times what is 24? Three. So seven times three is 21. When you go to subtract, can you take 21 away from 16? Unfortunately, no. So you have to borrow from the whole number. So that 27 now becomes 26. And then I go to add one as a fraction of the same number over itself. And I'm gonna pick whatever that denominator was. Now the denominators stay the same and you can combine those numerators. 16 plus 24 is 40. Don't be afraid to do scratch work off to the side if you need to rather than doing it in your head so you don't make silly errors. Now you keep the denominator the same and you have a big enough numerator of 40 to take 21 away from. So speaking of doing scratch work off to the side, 10 minus one is nine, three minus two is one. Okay, so 40 minus 21 is 19, and then the whole number is 26 minus six is 20. You can't reduce that, and it's not improper, so we're done. 20 and 19, 24, so go ahead and cross that off. And then let's also take a look at number 14, just to get you started. Um, you're welcome to hit pause on the video and try it yourself to see if you got it right and then press play again to follow along. It says a cabinet has shelves that are 11 and a half inches apart. Um, on one shelf, Mike stacked a VCR that is this high, um, inches high on top of an amplifier that is this many inches high. How much space is left above the VCR? So this is how far apart they are, and this is how much he has of stuff on it, and he wants to know how much space is left. So first of all, if you have these two things stacked 
on top of each other, you need to find the total um, inches that it covers. So let's go ahead and add those. So you have five and one fourth plus three and three eighths. Now you never wanna write the answers like this. You always wanna write them vertically so then you can find common denominators and line them up that way. Okay, but you're first of all gonna find that answer. Then whatever you get for that answer on a separate sheet of paper, because there's no place to show your work here, you're gonna take how far apart the shelves were and subtract that answer that you got right here. Okay, when you added five and a fourth plus three and three eighths, you're gonna subtract that from 11 and a half. So this is a two-step problem. And then that will give you your final answer of how much space is left. All right, once you're done with this, you should get these answers. Okay, if you mastered all those and you got them right, congratulations. These were very difficult problems. Good job, my little mathematicians, at mastering yet another standard.